Hello everyone, welcome back to KC3D Sparks. As you can see here, I already have my scene set up so we can go ahead and start creating this sarcophagus. Everything's in inches and I made the box one inch and the grid also has changed so that way I'd like to set up that four boxes per inch. So pretty basic, I already also hit the lamp in the camera since I'm not worried about rendering but I like to leave it in the scene anyway. Of course, if you have any questions, make sure you just comment that down below and um, I can get back to you or you can always go over to my website, KC3DSparks, and comment or submit a question that way. I have free reference images here that you can see that I just pulled off of Google and I'm going to emulate more of that one that you saw in the bottom left. But the first thing I'm going to do here is add a mirror modifier. Since it is pretty much, I'm doing a much simplified, um, much more simplified model, it doesn't need to have that on there, plus I can always add it and then um, fix that later. So I started with a basic little house shape here and deleted the side and the other half so that way I can just have one corner to model. And then I'm going to work on the post. So I added two edge loops to try and make the um, corner stand out. Um, I just <laughs> made it more rectangular before, so I had to redo it and um, make it more square. Here I'm adding the flat line to go down into the make out the edge. Kind of, you know, a little bit thick, but not definitely not too thin. It's after doing this, I realized, of course. I needed extra loops in here so that way because if you just move a face as you can see you just that whole edge moved and that's not what I want. So I added in another edge loop after realizing that extruding didn't work, remembering that extruding didn't work because then you have like an extra face down there as well. But yeah, just add in those extra loops so that way you don't have to deal with extruding and then getting rid of extra faces or anything like that and it'll just move back very nicely for you and perfect so now here I'm adding some detail so this I haven't shown you guys before I'm going to use an array modifier to make one of those details so I'm making like that roughly bead like uh, sculpture I'm not really sure what to call it on the edges and so basically you create your shape that you want each one to look like you add a curve or a path, whichever one you want. You could do a circle, anything like that. And then you add the array modifier to it and it will basically repeat all of the shapes for you. So you only have to model one, put it in the exact spot and then it'll follow that path. So obviously I wanted a straight line. So I just did the path one. You can do the, make any type of shape that you'd want those or like text or anything to follow. So basically it's just a much, much easier way to sculpt out those intricate details that are <laughs> clearly repetitive. So again, just a much easier way to do it and then I can just copy each one after I get it placed where I want it and um, or duplicate it, whichever you prefer. Duplicate it, rotate it, and just move it into place very, very quickly and easily. And then of course for the sides, you just take the countdown since it's too long. You don't need to shrink it or anything, just take the countdown because the um, modifier is still there. It'll still work for you. So um, here I am just flipping it over so that way I can add it to the lid piece as well. Just another nice detail. I didn't do it to the sides, uh, just to the part where it was flat and not angular and then I'm taking these toruses and essentially just adding some more detail to the top here you can do whatever you want I wanted something to look kind of different um, I did that and then I went ahead and added a sphere so that way yeah I tried out the three ring first realized it looked a little not quite what I was going for so I added a sphere to go in the center of it to maybe kind of look like a gem or something um, pretty to be in the center that could be displayed. 
move it back so that way it's not sticking too far out. And then I just grabbed all three objects and moved it to the other side after duplicating it. So here I have added four loops. Move the two center loops inward to create that crease. And then I beveled a lot of the edges. Because for this one, it's carved stone. You could have sharp edges if you wanted, but I wanted it to be um, a little bit nicer looking. I feel like for carved stuff, you would have, you know, the beveled edges. And I also raised it up off the ground so the posters are kind of, um, the posts are kind of sticking out. And then here, this is optional, of course. But since I'm going to upload this to Shapeways, I like to hollow it out just so it's a lot, lot cheaper to print out because then you don't have all that material that they're printing. So it's going to be much more cost efficient. And lastly, I added another bump out just kind of like to help frame that box just as another little detail. And of course, I beveled that edge with the top edge as well. And there we go. So very, very quick and simple. Like I said, after all that, all I have to do is go back and um, all I have to do is go back and add all the Boolean modifiers to the sarcophagus. I like to duplicate everything so that way if something messes up, I still have a backup. So if you're a risk taker, you don't have to do that, but that's just my preference. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you can comment, like, and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Let me know what else you want to want me to make or do a tutorial of or anything that you think is missing from my shop for your um, d and campaign or if I already have something in my shop that you want some details added to it, again, just let me know. I'd love to hear any feedback, but for now, I'm just going to finish up letting us play through. I will see you guys next time.